church member by Tom Rainer. And we're going to talk about preferences in prayer. Not preferences, but prayer. Every morning I get up and I have my bowl of oatmeal. I know some of you are probably grossed out by that, but I, uh, I get steel oats oatmeal and I make it in a rice cooker and cook it for about 20 minutes and I come back and it's ready and throw some walnuts in there and, and maybe have a fruit on the side, usually bananas or something like that. And it's a nice healthy breakfast. It's, it's kind of a preference now that I've developed over the past few months. Prior to that, I used to have uh, eggs. I would have um, uh, regular, flat out, uh, uh, over medium eggs, and I would maybe have a meat on the side and toast with it. And and my doctor had had spoken with me about trying to lose some weight, and and one of the things I could do was to cut out the eggs. So I went to egg substitutes, and I used cheese with that, and started uh, started uh, having breakfasts like that. But what what I ended up doing is realizing that that wasn't cutting out some of the uh, animal fats that I needed to cut out of my diet. The cheese wasn't good and the, the egg substitute wasn't good. So I started with the oatmeal. So it, it became a preference of mine. I, I retrained myself to uh, begin to, to take um, the oatmeal first thing in the morning and enjoy that. So I've been enjoying eating some of that every morning. And my coffee now is, uh, is, is black coffee. It used to be cream and sugar in that. But now I have black coffee in it, the same thing. I changed what my preferences was for my overall health. Um, get out and exercise. Try to take care of my body a little bit. You know, we all have preferences. And some of you may could never do that. Some of you could say, well, I, I couldn't eat oatmeal and I couldn't eat walnuts. I can't stand the texture of oatmeal. I can't stand black coffee. But you might have your own preferences for breakfast. Some of you don't even eat breakfast. And some of you have maybe a pizza for breakfast. Who knows? But uh, we, we have our preferences. Well, the truth is we have preferences which also go to the church. It extends to the church. As, as believers in Christ, we have preferences um, in how we worship and how we study the Bible and how we interact with people um, and how we dress. We have preferences in the type of music we like to sing and type of music we like to hear. Um, some of us like to put our hands up as we sing. Some of us like to clap our hands. Some of us like to do nothing and sit there. And, and sometimes the other preferences might irritate you, but it shouldn't be that way because preferences are just that. They are preferences. Um, some people like to dress up, dress to the nines, the old expression goes, where they, they dress up to be a, a, a suit and tie or women with long dresses and, and hats even. And uh, that may be your preference, and that's okay in our church to dress like that. It's okay to dress in a little more casual of dress. Some, some wear t-shirts, some wear collared shirts, pullovers with slacks, and, and, and uh, uh, women will wear maybe uh, jeans and, and shirts, and that, that's all okay. We all have our own preferences. We have our preferences for music, our preferences for dress, our preferences for food, our preferences for the style of preaching, our preferences for the length of service, our preferences for the Sunday school material that we might buy or use. Uh, we have our preferences for our Sunday school classes. We have preferences in the church. But let me say this. Preferences should never overshadow purpose. Preferences should never over, overcome anything that we do as a church's purpose. In Matthew 28, Jesus had said to his disciples uh, to go and to make disciples of all men, uh, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all things I've commanded you. And then he says, and I will be with you until the ends of the age. Jesus had told them and given them a great commission to go and do that. How do you do that? He says in Matthew 22 that, <clears throat> that there's a, a two great commandments. Remember those two great commandments that they asked him? They said, which is the greatest commandment? And he said, well, the first is um, the, the commandment is to love the Lord your God with your, all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like this. It is to love your neighbor as yourself. So to, com to fulfill the great commission of Matthew 28 to go and make disciples, we must love God and love people. Very simple, very simple concept. I've said this multiple times. My goal is for us to come, everyone, to come to Christ, to grow in Christ, to um, serve through Christ, and to share Christ. And so we come, grow, 
serve, share. That's the Christian life. And that's our purpose. But when we begin to get into preferences that overshadow that purpose, well, we get into trouble. And when we get into trouble, what happens is we have infighting. And churches never grow when infighting occurs. I, I said something in our small group last week that I want to repeat because I said to my group, I said, oh, I got to write this down. It was that God is most glorified when we are unified. If you think about that a minute, and that, that goes to our chapter last week, God is glorified when we're unified because we get on purpose and we begin to think about purpose and not preferences. Well, Jesus um, knows and he knew that it's very easy for us to fall off of our purpose. He told his uh, disciples that if any of you wants to be great among you, that, that, that you're going to have to be the least among them. In fact, he even used himself as an example. In, in Matthew 22 and also in Mark 10, he says this. He said, in order to be the leader, to lead others, he says, you must be a servant. He said, for the, this is a quote, for the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. That's what Jesus did. He, he gave himself a, light, a ransom. And so he gave us an example of how we are to serve others. And you serve others in, in various ways. And, and, and we've been talking about this every week. And, and, and I know it's very easy to fall off purpose. So, so what do we do when we fall off purpose? Because it happens to all of us. We all get caught up in these little preferences things. So, so what's the solution for that? Jesus gave us two solutions. The, one of them he, give, he gave us, and I just spoke about it, and it's serving, serving others. The second is prayer, prayer. The serving part of it that he says, and, and it's attitude, it's an attitude of servanthood. Jesus talks about serving others and lifting others up. And, and if you notice, if you follow Jesus in the Gospels, he, he never goes through the Gospels, he never um, um, refuses to, to help. He, he, he's always, if he does, it's to test them. He instead serves them. Even when he goes away to pray to the Father and the people come and get him and they want him to, to serve, he doesn't even have enough time to do that. He stops what he was doing with the, his time with the Father and starts serving. Now, that could be dangerous for us as believers because we need that time, that mountaintop experience with the Father. We're not Jesus. But it also can be um, could be uh, exhilarating as we begin and continue to serve. So, so God wants us to to do both. He wants us to serve and, and he wants us to have that time with the Father and he wants us to grow as we do that. But, but Jesus put the priority on having an attitude that served others. It's a wonderful thing. He also put a priority on gratitude. Having a, a, a time of gratitude with the Father, a time of prayer with the Father. And so when you see Jesus' example of serving and praying and serving and praying, you see that that's inseparable. It's it's together. It's connected. Jesus had prayed in the garden. Remember when he prayed in, in John chapter 17 and he prayed for us? If you look at scripture and you look at John chapter 17, he said, not my will, Lord, but, but Father, but your will be done. And he prayed for not just the disciples that he had, but those whom they bring to him. He prayed for us. We're those people. And, and so he wants us to also have an attitude of prayer. Now, I'm not going to lie if I, if, I'm not, if I tell you that I don't need prayer from you. As a pastor, I do need prayer. And if you read chap, the chapter on prayer and praying for your pastor, that's a pretty big deal to pray for, for your pastor. But I'm going to ask you to pray not just for me, but for all of our church leaders. We have other pastors in our church. We have a pastor of worship who does a wonderful job, Harry Robinson. Pray for him and his family. Pray for me and my family. Pray for our pastor of children and, and families, Roy Prechter. And pray for, pray for Jamie as, as he is our, our pastor of youth and, and faces the struggles every day with the youth. You pray for them. One of the recommendations that Tom Rainer said is to pray for your leaders uh, five minutes a day to pray for your pastor. I would love for you to pray, for everyone to pray for five minutes a day for, for our leadership. Pray for our deacons or your Sunday school teachers. Pray for those people who work so hard as team leaders those who work in the care and, and, and the love for other people. You know, prayer is, is that, that, that thing that gets the, the whole ball of wax moving, right? 
it, it, it's, it's the power behind the engine of, of our car. It's a gasoline for us moving. In fact, it's probably the engine in our car. Prayer gets us together. And here's the thing about prayer. Yes, prayer is, is, is the power that we have and we rely on. Prayer also is the power for you to remove preferences. Let me encourage you as you talk in your small groups to talk about ways that you can pray for one another, for our church, for me, selfishly I say that, for our other pastors, for our deacons. Talk about how you can pray for one another and that you show the love of Christ by praying for them. We need prayer so that we can serve and serve Christ to get our health together, to get our mental health together, to get our spiritual health together and to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ to do the gospel work. I hope you're ready to pray. I hope you're ready to set your preferences aside and lift up the, the church and lift up the Lord as you serve Him in a very special way. God bless you. Enjoy your time of discussion.